Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Rangers uh, Review Morning Briefing for Monday, the 18th of March. I'm Derek Clark, and I'm joined this morning by Chris Jack, fresh from a, a, a touristy trip up to Dundee yesterday. How was that, Chris? There, there are better places to go on a, on a Sunday drive. It's not the it's not the one that would have picked. Um, if I was just going for a wee jaunt in the car, or I maybe have taken uh, my wife and, and kids with us. But I took Graham McGarry from the Herald instead, which was lovely. Graham's excellent company, of course, but um, no, not the not the the day out that we were expecting. Um, got to got to Dens Park just as the as the game was called off. That, that was the end of that. Um, but also still a bit of work to do. Speaking to uh, Philippe Clement rightly. Um, bemused, is putting it lightly at the at the entire situation, um, and fair play to Don Robertson for fronting up and speaking to a few media outlets as well. So I thought I thought that was I thought that was good. Um, drive back down the road, um, obviously without without three points, unfortunately. Um, so it is it is what it is, and we're now into the to the international week, which is uh, aye, not the not the best. No no midweek European game to look forward to, no Rangers game to look forward to at the at the weekend. So it's not it's not ideal. But um roll on the roll on the Hibs game a week on Saturday, counting down the days already. Yeah, uh, I mean two minds about uh, yesterday uh, gutted of course that we never had any football to look forward to. I think that the late call off was uh uh, really hugely unfortunate for all those, uh, not just yourself, Chris, but there's people travelling from all over the place to attend this game. It was such a late call off. That, uh, I don't understand why uh, we couldn't have uh, maybe an inspection uh, on Saturday evening. I know the manager uh, was pretty irate uh, at the late call off, not being informed by uh, Dundee. Uh, I don't think that it could have been played uh, on that pitch. Uh, having a look at it, you've seen that the images yesterday and the, the videos. Uh, and like you say, it was interesting to hear Don Robertson's side of things. You can check uh, his interview out over on the YouTube channel, folks. Um, and uh, Chris and Joshua also uh, were on yesterday to give their view uh, on it. Uh, it's uh, unfortunate in a way that uh, it was an opportunity, Chris, to put Thursday night behind Rangers and uh, return it to the top of the league. That is not going to be the case. And it remains to be seen when this game will be scheduled in. Like you, Derek, I'm I'm in two minds about the whole thing. Um, I think I, I fall on the side of the manager. I think of it would be better to get it played, get it won, you take it off, and, and you move on. Um, but for anybody that saw the pitch either in person or on on the TV or or in pictures yesterday, clearly not fit for purpose. Not fit for purpose at any level in Scottish football. Never mind on on Sky Sports with a team that's going for the title. And mm. the and the Premiership, it's no 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 fit state to uh, to play a game on. So the right call was made. Rangers also made their feelings clear in their statements. The manager did a couple of interviews with various outlets as well. Um, same themes to a lot of them. Really unhappy at one the state of the of the pitch and two the communication around about the whole thing. It's far from acceptable for the level of communication between the clubs. Far from acceptable for the fans then to be left in that position. Um, I said I got to a Dens Park a couple of hours before kick off, just as as word was coming through that the game was uh, the game was off. And there's already re- plenty of Rangers fans milling about. You know, people yeah. walking out to get to the ground nice and early. Um, there's people there waiting for the team bus to arrive to try and see the players coming off. I may try and get pictures or autographs. So mm. it's not as if everybody stays within five minutes of Dens Park and you can call it off on a, on a whim. There's Rangers fans travelling huge distances, spending huge amounts of money um, on the back of spending money in Lisbon last week, on the back of Seville and Limassol and so, all, all the domestic away games, plus the season tickets. It's a huge financial burden on, on the fans to follow a team like Rangers home and abroad through three competitions domestically. Um, and for them to be left in that in that situation, then left having to fork out again when that game is replayed, it's no, nowhere near good enough. Um, I think the the SPFL and the, the SPFL and the SFA have to look at processes involved in terms of the to be set earlier deadlines for for pitch inspections. Do we have the referee turn up four hours before kickoff rather than just a couple of hours before kickoff? It has it has to be changed because we've seen this situation before and nothing's happened about it. Yesterday, all round was just farcical. As it was, it has to be said, when, I, when Aberdeen went to Dens earlier on in the season, the Aberdeen fans were in the stand behind the goal and yeah. the game was called off. Um, uh, and that's just as unacceptable. So 
it's a it's a problem for I think the, the governing bodies to address. It, the pitch problem is something for Dundee to address. Myself and Josh spoke a lot about pitches in the on the video yesterday in terms of standard of them, in terms of the investment in them. That's a more pressing um, situation for Dundee. Um, but in terms of Rangers and Rangers fans, it was just a waste of time yesterday. Um, and a game that could have been another step, another big three points, another one ticked off, um, ultimately ends up being a wasted a wasted time and they'll have to go back up. So time will tell when the um, when that fixture is to rearrange for. Um, mm. The manager said yesterday there is no positives here. Um, and he's a guy who likes to try and find small positives and everything. Now we think of everything that he's he's had to deal with in terms of injuries and results over the course of the over the course of his reign. He always tends to look on the bright side. Yesterday he was asked, are there any positives here? He just said no, I can't can't find any. So I think that probably probably tells you where we are from from his perspective. Yep, yeah, uh, totally agree with you. There should be some sort of uh, fund, SPFL fund. I said this yesterday. There's enough money that they are, uh, they have in reserve there to compensate supporters who made uh, travel arrangements and made their way to Dense Park uh, yesterday. Whether that that uh, comes to fruition remains to be seen. But uh, yeah, I felt sorry for all those who made their way to Dense Park. Just uh, to give you an idea of who Rangers face next after the international break, as uh, Chris said, folks, uh, on Saturday the 30th, uh, Rangers entertain Hibs at Ibrooks. Then it's Old Firm Day on the 7th of April. Uh, Rangers then go to Dingwall on the 14th, uh, 12 o'clock kickoff there. Uh, and then that is, uh, so that is it before the split. Uh, I'd imagine they'll try and fit it in maybe uh, the midweek, perhaps, between Hibs and Celtic or between uh, Celtic and Ross County. But uh, yeah, uh, that's up to the organisers and uh, the two clubs to come to some arrangement. Uh, and you'll be the first to know, folks, as soon as we understand when that game will be replayed. Uh, this sums it up. Tommy Scott gets in touch, says, I travelled up from Newcastle, two nights in a hotel, heading home now. It's guys like this who should be compensated. So uh, I'm sure Neil Doncaster watches uh, the Rangers review every morning, Chris. So if you're watching, Neil, uh, reach into your pocket and uh, compensate these guys, please. Um, right, let's uh, move on. Other news over the weekend, Chris. Uh, I've seen that Kamar Roof uh, has given an interview. Uh, I noticed this uh, in the sun. Uh, of course, he's uh, out of contract in the summer uh, and he was quizzed uh, on his uh, future and where that may lie. He said, uh, my future, who knows? You need to ask the gaffer and the people in control of the contracts. I'd like to stay. Of course I would. I really like playing in this squad and under this gaffer. What he's brought to the club is massive. He's built a real machine mentality. We go again. It's like a switch we have. We're disappointed just now about Europe, but we'll recover and we double our efforts. We have a treble to go for this season and they could do uh, the quadruple next season. Uh, I truly believe that's when you see the results of his work. Everyone's learning his style of play and what he wants and it's vice versa with him. Once he gets a few injuries out of the system the next season, the machine that should be uh, really firing. It's a great club. The fan base is top, being in competitions like the Champions League and Europa League is amazing. So for me right now, I'm just trying to play as many games as I can, do my best and help us get as many trophies as we can. Uh, it was also asked about um, being injured. Uh, he said uh, it's frustrating if you're not playing, you want to play. If you're injured or not injured, you want to play and it's going to be frustrating for you. It's just about having the right mentality. You support the team, train properly and then do your best when you come back on the pitch. But there's no doubt that I want to play more games, win more games and score more goals. I feel good. I had my hip operation that I needed for a long time and I'm pain free. Although if I'm being honest, I rushed back too soon after the op, but I got the issue sorted and the gaffer is helping me through the situation. I trust him and he has trust in me. I've been building it up, not just getting plonked in the deep end and it being sink or swim. We are doing it properly. It was disappointing and frustrating to go out on Thursday because it was a big night, big occasion, and we've done well before on those sort of occasions. We prepared all week for it and we played really well. It's just those fine margins, isn't it? They got their goal and we didn't manage to get one. Um, so there you go. That's uh, Roof on his contract situation, Chris, and his frustration and not playing as many minutes as he would like to. I've said before, I would be amazed if he's offered a new deal at Ibrox given the lack of action we've seen from him. Um, what do you make his comments? Um, I like the fact that he, I like the fact that he clearly likes it at Rangers. I like the fact that he's <laughs> ambitious and and that he wants to 
and he wins the win trophies. But for me, there's there's not a new contract on the table. I just don't think Rangers. <clears throat> sorry, I just don't think Rangers can afford to take the can afford to take the risk. Um, I think we've, we've all said not just this season but previous seasons. If you can guarantee the games from Kamal Roof, you can guarantee a certain level of goals because we know what you can bring to a side. But you just can't. <laughs> now, how many how many times does he come back and then he uh, falls away again? And yeah. well, there's no no set and no set time scale on it. I just don't see how Rangers um, can afford to take the uh, can afford to take the uh, 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 the game risk on him next season at all. Mm. Yeah, uh, I think that's the majority of the comments that are coming in. So, uh, let us know if you disagree, folks, if you would give uh, Kamar Roof a, a new deal. There's a lot of comments saying that he should be <laughs> offered a pay-as-you-play uh, offer. Uh, James Strachan uh, with a point here, he says, pay him for the games he plays. Very rarely do you see that anymore in, in today's game, Chris. Uh, I would be amazed if that, that sort of uh, agreement was reached. Uh, understand uh, the thinking behind it, incidentally. Why should you pay for someone if he's just sitting in the stand? Uh, it will be interesting to see if he does depart Ibrox, where he's going to end up, who's going to take uh, the chance on him. I'd imagine perhaps there's one or two lower league clubs in England. Uh, perhaps he might go League One, maybe Championship, maybe a, a push. But um, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see where he's going to, he's going to play his football after Ibrox. There's nothing shooter than if he does leave Rangers, he'll go to the championship <laughs> and play 40 games next season and sco- score t- 28 goals in the process. Um, g- yeah. given, Rangers, given Rangers luck on, on the injury front, that's no doubt how it'll, how it'll unfold. Um, but I, I think he's he's clearly a talented player. No, nobody can deny that he's not a very, very good striker on his on his day. Um, and I know he's, he said in that interview with the, uh, with the Sunday papers um, over, over the weekend, He's had his operation and he's feeling good. But I remember speaking to him in the mix zone after scoring in, in Seville and he was feeling good. And we then had another yeah. had another setback. I think there's just there's just been there's just been too many of them. There's just been too many of these periods where he's not available for long enough. Um and Rangers simply can't afford to keep carrying guys who who are not contributing. Um I think that <clears throat> there will be another big turnover of players over the over the summer, um, seeing the comments, a lot of people saying there should be no contact for Ryan Jack. We've spoken yeah. about Borna Barisic over the last wee while. John McLaughlin obviously will move on. There could be another big turnaround, and and you would have to think that the manager and Neil Scoppin would see Roof and say, "Well, that's what we're getting," and a, a perfect level if he's fit. That's what we know he can bring to the side. But over the last three four seasons, this is what he's actually been able to deliver. Look at the wages. Look at the overall package and say, can we invest that better? Can we go and get someone who is eight years younger, ten years younger? That's got a sell-on fee, maybe only costs one or two million in terms of a transfer fee. And o- overall, that's a better fit for Rangers right now. That that's more in keeping with the with the squad building, with the squad development, with the transfer model that's in place, giving. A given contracts to guys at, at Roof's age. I know he's only 31, but he's going to be looking for another couple of seasons. He's not going to say, well, I'll take no. a pay as you play. Why, why would you? If you back yourself and you think you're fit, you go to the Championship, you'll pick up 30 grand a week. Why would you take take a deal to only get your wages when you kick a ball for Rangers? That's that's not going to happen. Um, I'd be surprised if he settled for a one-year deal. You're then looking at two. Can Rangers really commit themselves to another couple of a million pounds on Kamal Roof over the next two seasons when you think that could be reinvested in someone younger, fitter, agreed, maybe not as, as proven at this at this level, but it's a risk worth taking. Um the the wage bill um has, has gone up again this season mm-hmm. and there's just not they're just not the value just not the value for money in it. Now some of that is because certain transfers haven't haven't worked out and obviously the club will look to try and address that if they if they can. But this this season, certainly last season, the you're spending hundreds of thousands of pounds every week on guys who either couldn't contribute because they're not good enough, or couldn't contribute because they weren't fit enough. Um, that that scenario has to end for Rangers. It's not sustainable financially. It's not sustainable in a in a football sense. Um, and I, I think people saying that, I see a huge huge number of comments saying it's time to go. Thanks very much. All, all the best, Kamar. I think people should thank him for his efforts because he has been. At times, a good player for Rangers. He's played in a team that won fifty-five. He's got his own, got his own place within Rangers' recent history. 
I just don't see him having a place in Rangers' uh, current future. Yeah, uh, uh, listen, we know he's uh, been injured for much of his career at Ibrox, but there has been uh, outstanding moments that will live long in the memory. Goal against Braga, standard Liège goal, goals against Celtic, uh, his uh, contribution to 55, of course, uh, as well. We Betis is another one. Um, so it's just been hugely unfortunate we've not seen him uh, for as much as we would have liked. Um, there was a, a few interesting points coming in off the back of that. Of course, he's not the only player out of contract in the summer. Homer says uh, Lundstrom is the only player we should extend. That's still uh, sort of ongoing at the moment, Chris, uh, those uh, negotiations. Uh, sh- should we be a tad concerned that no agreement has been signed yet? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think the last time I checked on this was maybe oh, three weeks or so. I've lost track of time a wee bit. I think it was three weeks or so ago. Um, and word was that all parties were in agreement that a contract um, is the way forward. Everyone's committed to making it happen. Rangers are, are keen to tie him down. The manager wants him as part of the squad. So I would be surprised if that one if that one doesn't happen. Um, I think when you look at the, the schedule that Rangers have just come through, there's been slightly more important things to worry about than getting John Lundstrom to sit down and sign that particular bit of paper. I, I've said throughout the course of the season, this question has come up every every few weeks or so. Mm-hmm. I don't see there being a real urgency to tie him down because I don't see there being a huge queue of teams looking to try and uh, sign him on a pre-contract. I think it's a different situation than it was with Morelos and Kent last season. Slightly bigger value assets um, and the Rangers had invested had invested more money in and thought they would get more money back for ultimately than they did. Um Lundstrom is a different situation. The fact that it's not been signed, I I wouldn't get too uh, get too worried about it as, mm. as far as I'm aware. Everyone is still fully committed to that, uh, to that happening. So I would think once things calm down uh, calm down a wee bit, that will uh, that will be done and it'll it will be announced. Um but again as I think as as we spoke about a couple of weeks ago I don't see a number of these guys being being offered contracts, and certainly not certainly not right now. I know there was supposed to talk about Barisic last week. I'd be surprised if he stays on. Ryan Jack, I'd be surprised he falls into the same Kamal Roof uh, category. Um, also McLaughlin, time to move on. And you then look at the under-contract guys who are either on, on the fringes, the likes of Scott Wright perhaps, um, and you then look at Ben Davies, can you reinvest the money? Dessers, what do you decide to do there? Lammers, can you get rid and cut your losses? And even guys in like Vaskin, I think, perhaps fall into that conversation as well. So it's shaping up to be a to be an interesting summer. But um, as I say, plenty of football to be played before uh, before that. And uh, there's certainly plenty of big prizes to be won first. Yeah, uh, good to get uh, Phil commenting in as ever. Just on the Roof situation, he says, uh, I like Mr Roof and a fully fit Roof is arguably our best striker, but that's it, he's really fit. I feel for the guy with his injuries, but we're not a charity. Well said, uh, Mr Clement. So, uh, yep, so there it's coming from the, the horse's mouth there on the Kamar Roof's uh, situation. Uh, some interesting points coming in, but we'll, we'll address those. Um Just on Lundstrom, Chris, I think one player who may benefit from that game being postponed yesterday may be him. Uh, he looked... Uh, He's been a tad leggy uh, of late. I know he won the Man of the Match award in the Scottish Cup game against Hibs uh, last weekend. I thought he was terrific, but he's certainly someone who looks like uh, he needs a break. He has been playing every minute of every game uh, under uh, Philip Clement, and uh, perhaps uh, the two-week uh, break might do him the world of good. I think when you look at these last few weeks, it's been uh, it's been hectic for Rangers. They played a lot of games, a lot of different competitions under a lot of pressure. Um, and the uh, I said a huge setback was the was a Motherwell game at Ibrox. The whole team was whole team was just off at that day. I think the last couple of games, a number of the guys in the squad have just looked a bit as if the, the schedule is starting to um, take its toll on them. Um, you look at the like, stalwarts within the squad. The managers mentioned them. Myself and Josh have written about them over the last last wee while. You're looking at Butland, Tav, Goldson, John Suther falls into that category. I think that's one that people maybe go under the. It goes under the radar. People still think that no, John Suter's got this um, injury record. He's actually played a he's played a lot of games, a lot of minutes for Rangers this season. Um, and Lundstrom obviously falls into that as well. Yep. These guys, you can't have enough um, guys who you can just rely on within the squad. Rangers don't have enough of them. If they had ten rather than five, the squad wouldn't be in the situation that it's in. So. I think this this break is as frustrating as yesterday was, as frustrating as it is not being top of the league. I think the break has come at a good time for a number of them now. Yeah, yeah, uh, got to agree. Uh, 
just uh, yeah, and hopefully not just uh, breaks for players that are playing, but hopefully we get a few players back uh, who are uh, doing their rehab at this moment in time. I'm thinking of uh, Abdallah Sima being one. Uh, whether we see Danilo again uh, remains to be seen. Um, but yeah, there's one or two. Uh, I think uh, well, Todd Cantwell, I think, would have played at the weekend. Uh, like why Rabi Matondo, who's coming back uh, from injury as well. But uh, yeah, uh, listen, I think uh, for the majority of them, they'll be uh, getting stuck in the cryo chamber uh, and getting rested up ahead of what is going to be a climatic uh, end to the season. There is no doubt about it. Uh, there are players heading out on international duty. However, Chris uh, and Touchwood, each and every one of them come back uh, injury-free. Easier said than done. Uh, one of those who's been called up is Mohamed Diamandi uh, to not the Ivory Coast squad, but he's been called up to the Ghana squad. Uh, he has represented Ivory Coast at under-23 level. He was born in the Ivory Coast, uh, but moved to Ghana at a young age. Um, so he is eligible to play for them. Uh, they're playing the friendly games in Marrakesh in Morocco. Uh, I think they're playing against uh, Nigeria and Uganda. Possibility of coming up against Serial Dessers, uh, of all people there. Um, wish him well, Chris. Um, and uh, I think he, he, uh, he's deserving of it. I think he's like Lundstrom, has uh, maybe looked a bit leggy in the, the game against uh, Benfica in midweek. But uh, I think uh, his call-up is deserved. I think it is. He's, I, I was surprised when I saw that news yesterday um, that he'd, yes. he'd been called up for Ghana. Uh, not, I didn't even know that was a, a possibility oh, for him. I, I just yeah. assumed that he was he was committed to, uh, to Ivory Coast, uh, but he's also stepping up to full international level rather than 23, so interested to see how he does in those in those games. Um, and as you say, fingers crossed, all of these guys come back safe and sound and Silva is away with it. Portugal 21s, um, as you mentioned, Des is away as well. Uh, I'm sure the manager will be uh, keeping his phone very, very close to him over these over the next fortnight or so, just to just to get any updates that are coming through. Because um, losing losing Sima and in, in the circumstances at the time of the season uh, in a competition that nobody really, no fan really wants him to go to, but we knew it was a big thing for him, it was a big thing for the club. Mm -hmm. um, to then lose him going out there and didn't even didn't even kick a ball has had such an impact on Rangers. If you lose anyone now, it's potentially a season over job. Um, yeah. And Rangers with Cortez being out, with Danilo being out, really really short of options in the in the final third as we know. So this, this break, it's been said that it's a good chance to get Cantwell back up to speed. He's also given a shorter match minutes, but it's a bit more training time. Mm -hmm. Same with Dujon Sterling. It's time for likes of Scott Wright. Time for Ross McCausland. But on the flip side of that, as the guys that are going away, you need them all to come back. You need them all to come back fit um, because the squad is still light in, in areas. And as yeah. I say, anyone who picks up a knock now, um, it's, it's potentially season over um, territory. Yeah. So uh, ho hopefully, everyone, hopefully everyone, everyone enjoys their international time. But uh, don't, don't do anything daft, boys. Yeah, it might work for guys like uh, uh, we're talking about players getting up to up to speed. Matondo being called up mm -hmm. to the Wales squad for their uh, Euro 2024 playoffs. I think they play Finland and the winners of that play, the winners of Estonia and Poland. Whether he gets any minutes uh, remains to be seen, but uh, he'll be training at a high standard uh, with the Welsh team. So uh, good luck to Rabi. Fabio Silva called up to the Portuguese under 21 squad, which is uh, good for him. John Suter in uh, that Scotland squad as well for their friendlies against uh, Romania and Northern Ireland. Uh, there's an interesting, just when I touched on Dessers as well, Chris uh, Lewis with the point here, just talking about players perhaps being moved on in the summer, says, uh, will Dessers be out the door even if we win the league? Uh, I remember I've done a Q&A show uh, for the YouTube uh, members on Friday, and one of the questions that came in was about uh, Serial Dessers. I said that uh, it would be likely that he may be moving on in the summertime. I think Rangers need better. Uh, I think they need two out and out strikers. If Kamar Roof's leaving, it leaves just one in Danilo. Uh, jury's still out on him for me, whether he is the answer up top. So I think Rangers will need to be looking at bringing in more firepower in the summer. Is Dessers leaving for you? Um, yes, I think. Um, I, I would be surprised if he's still part of the, still part of the squad. Um, feels that I've been harsh on him over the course of the season. Because at times he has contributed, at times he has played quite well, he has scored goals, but you just think Rangers need Rangers need better. Uh, mm -hmm. I think o over the course overall we have been have been lucky in, in a sense with him because he has shown himself to be quite robust. He has put together 
a number of games. He's he's there. He's available. He misses chances. He always comes back for more. There's things to like about him. Um, he's a likable big guy. He always speaks well. I think he's he's bought into the club. He likes it here. But you just look at the overall overall style, the overall contribution, and you do wonder again, like like a number of guys in the squad, if you're Clement and you're Niels Coppin, would you back yourself to go and reinvest that money in a in a better way and get someone who suits you a bit more? So I would be surprised. I, I still don't think he's at, at the level that Rangers really need. Um actually I saw someone on, on the gantry at halftime on Thursday. Um and also the tie very much open at that stage. And we're both saying if Rangers had a peak Morelos on this side, the tie would be done by now. I think you think back to some of the European nights, Morelos mm-hmm. dominating entire back fours himself, just being able to hold the ball up, be able to rough up defenders, run into different areas, take chances that uh, that come his way. And you then think back to some of the Tessa's performances. Now, we were also both in, in Seville for one of the highlights of his season. He really passed out that and, goal. I think it amazed but, everyone. But you see him do that and you just wonder, well, why why can't you do it more often? I know it's, it's not as easy as that, but he's clearly got something. But for me, I, I just don't, I, I don't see him being the type of guy you're going to build a forward line round about. Um, and if you then think that Roof moves on, as, as you say, Silva, I'd be surprised if Rangers uh, can get a, mm-hmm. it, it can get a deal done for him. They're looking at, once again, a lot of money being spent on a, on a forward line. And we're only, what, nine months or so on from a lot of money being spent on a forward line. So, Rangers will have to have to shop cleverly over the mm-hmm. over the course of the summer, um, and I think if if they can do a, do a deal that gets them a decent fee back in for for Dessers, you would then look to try and reinvest that. Yep, uh, a peak Morelos that they've had uh, Otamendi on toast uh, of that. There is uh, no doubt. It's just unfortunate that uh, that peak Morelos is. Uh, a long, long way uh, ago, unfortunately. Um, Darren Nelson with the point. That's an interesting one. I think we'll wrap up with this. Uh, he says, uh, does anyone know what's happening with Lowry? Of course, uh, he returned to Rangers. Philip Clement wasn't best pleased, it's fair to say, after picking up an injury at Hearts. Uh, and it turned out to be more serious than uh, what they had um, uh, thought uh, previously. Uh, so he's, uh, he was unable to be sent back out on loan elsewhere. Remains to be seen if he's someone, I think he's a forgotten man, Chris, whether he can make a, a, a dramatic return from injury and feature perhaps in that first team in the title running. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'm not expecting to see him anytime soon. No, I can't actually remember when, when the manager revealed that, that news just after I like, came back to the club. I can't remember the, exact, the deadline, sure it was. I, it was I, I'm not sure what the exact uh, time frame that he and he put on it. I actually saw Alec, I was sitting in the in the youth reception after the press all over there. He came out, <clears throat> and I think, alongside Ross McCausland. Um, so he is, at, he is at the training ground, um, but I don't know if he's going through rehab, if he's back mm-hmm. in full training. Not sure what the uh, what situation is, but he's picked up this injury at a really rotten time because honestly, yeah. it denied him the chance to then go out on loan for the second half of the season and, and play regularly. The fact it's been a longer term one then keeps him out of the Rangers squad when there's places up for grabs there. I mean, you look at the amount of football that Tom Lawrence has had to play over the last mm-hmm. last couple of weeks while well, Todd Cantwell's been getting back to fitness. There was potential match minutes in there for someone like Alec Lowry. And as Cole McKinnon has shown, <clears throat> as Ross McCausland has shown, it's right place, right time. If oh, well, Cantwell was out, if Lowry had been fit, he could have got his chance, he could have impressed, and that could have been the that could have been the first start for him, but not not being available is is obviously taking that uh, taking that uh, situation off the off the table. So um, I I think it's a, a long long way back for uh, for Alec, which is a shame because when he came through, everyone got excited. Everyone could see the technical ability, we could, you could see the vision, we could see that this guy has got has got something. He could be a first team player uh, going forward for Rangers. Last season never worked out. Loan to Hearts never worked out, um, and it's hard to think how he goes from where he is just now to being the backup number ten for Todd Cantwell, for example, this time uh, or come the uh, come the new season. So I think I think he falls into that falls into that group where it's m- maybe best that he uh, that he moves on over the over the course of the close season. Yeah, uh, yeah. Watch this space with Alex Lowry. I remember the manager saying it's uh, a hard one because we were going to make an assessment on him, uh, but uh, it's going to be difficult because he hasn't been playing any minutes. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, we'll try and get an update when when 
Rangers do return in a couple of weeks. Um, that will do us there. Thanks to everyone for interacting with the show. Huge thanks to Chris as ever as well. Uh, plenty to come on the website. Might be international break, uh, but there'll always be content over on the Rangers Review website, folks, and also on the YouTube channel as well. So uh, keep your eyes peeled on both. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, I think Josh is back tomorrow uh, with my good self. So uh, we hope you can join us for that. Until then, enjoy the rest of your Monday. Bye for now.